the walk-on, a non-scholarship athlete that isn't actively recruited, doesn't usually show up on depth charts, and is commonly relegated to the scout teams. For coach Dan McCartney, it is a player that will always be an essential piece to his team's success. When you go as a walk-on to a Division I program, that means that 126 coaching staffs didn't think you were worthy of a scholarship. So the motivation, the incentive, the pride, uh, the, the drive every day should be so strong. We know we've had some walk-ons that have lived in their own cars. We've had walk-ons that don't eat, you know, trying to survive on, on ramen noodles. It's a very humbling process. Uh, you start out from high school and usually you're the top dog in high school, uh, you know, big guy on campus, and then you get to college and uh, you, you have to go through this walk-on process because uh, maybe you didn't get as many college opportunities, scholarship opportunities that you wanted. Every day you just battling just to just even just to get on the field. Some guys, you know, take days off, but as a walk-on, you got to prove yourself every day because every day you've been evaluated. You basically become uh, just another guy, a number, and you got it's up to you uh, to uh, work hard and do your best and get the opportunity to get on the field. And when the opportunity comes, it's it's awesome. It's amazing. And you know that hard work has paid off. Although they may be a backup early or waiting for their opportunity to step in and get that chance. They're all treated the same equally. You know, Coach Mack has been very fair with the walk-on program. He treats every player the same. Um, you know, there's really, if even if you're a walk-on or on scholarship, you're all, you know, you're all part of the same team. He gives us a chance. Like, he says, you know, I brought you on this team to help us out, but I'm going to give you your fair amount of shots. Now, it's up to you what you do with them. I think it's real cool to see walk-on go through the process and then let alone earn a scholarship and then amazingly become a starter and a key contributor to the team. When they call you out there to make a play as a walk-on, you have to make that play and you have to be prepared, like at all times, because you never know, because that might be your first and last chance because they got plenty of other guys out there. The importance of walk-ons was instilled in McCartney while at the University of Iowa. That philosophy continued during his days at Iowa State, and since his arrival at North Texas, McCartney has awarded 20 scholarships to walk-ons. Then I took the job at Iowa State. 52 young men in my 12 years at, no at Iowa State as a head football coach earned scholarships the hard way. You watch me defy the odds and earn scholarships and help us be part of history, successful history at Iowa State. So when you see guys like uh, Kenny Byers, I mean, once he earned a spot on the team, he just ramped up his uh, hard work even that much more and eventually earned playing time and now he's become a starter and key contributor to our defense, one of our best cornerbacks on the team. Nobody knows but set walk-ons how expensive school is and that woke me up because I've, everywhere I've been, I've been on scholarship. That was the most important part to me and my family because we was going through a hard time right then and there and that just came right on time as a blessing. I got the scholarship going into junior year spring ball. I mean, it's a great experience. It's a, uh, you know, you work so hard for this, you know, two years, working hard, doing the best you can, and eventually getting what you came here for is awesome. Great feeling. I just want to go play football. Never thought about trying to get a scholarship, never thought about becoming captain on team, on the team, never becoming a leader. I just want to play football. So when that day of spring ball, when Coach McCartney gave me a scholarship, it was clearly one of the best days I've ever had here at the University of North Texas. When Coach McCartney said my name, I just, I just had this amazing feeling. I was just so happy. Um, you know, it was, just a, it was one of the most moments that I will never forget. Coach Mack is a man of his word. He says, if you work hard and you earn it, he will put you on scholarship. Kenny, Blake, Caden, Drew Miller, um, Skip, all those guys getting scholarships. And it, you know, I feel like I can, I want to be the next guy in line. So, and I know what they've done to get it. And they're on the field you know, making big plays, and so if I keep making big plays, hopefully it'll pay off for me as well. When you award them a scholarship as a walk-on, and I'm not talking about giving them anything, they earned it. They earned it the hard way, the right way. It's one of the great feelings, and every single time that I do that is as inspirational and as emotional as it was the last time that I did that. In 2013, many former walk-ons have become key contributors. Wide receiver Darnell Smith, the team's leader in receptions, and defensive back Kenny Byers both received all-conference honors, while punter Blake Mosick and center Caden Kirby were selected to the conference all-freshman team. 
It's just waiting for their opportunity to knock on the door. And I tell them often, I told Darnell when he would come in my office during that first camp about when your opportunity knocks, don't just open the door, kick the door open. It's amazing to see the, the transformation he's made just from that, that first day until now. He has never given up on his dream about being a Division I football player and being a starter and having over 60 catches, and I think he's accomplished that. But what I'm probably most proud of him is he too cares more about this team than he does himself. And that speaks volumes to the type of character, the young man that we have in this program. Never take it for granted, because it's a blessing. And it's just an honor that Coach Mack and all the coaches just trust into me. Those kids are the heart of your program. Those are the ones that understand sacrifice and commitment, and they're willing to give it all they got to get there. The examples, the role models, um, the success stories are almost endless. And I've always had a special place in my heart for walk-ons. I always will. And it will remain, it will remain a real strong part of the North Texas football program. Again? Every time I go down to get Bud Light, we score. I crack the code. I should stay down there. But I don't want to stay down there. It's scary. But this is three times now. This is for the win. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. The bottom line in this business, whether it's you know high school, college, or the pros, is wins. And so for a long time, North Texas struggled to get the kind of win-loss record that can really mobilize a fan base. See, they got they got clobbered and clobbered pretty good there for a number of years. It, it was difficult. Yeah, everybody is prideful. You, you, you walk around campus and you want to be pride of what, you know proud of what you do. But uh, when you're winning two games, uh, th th there's not much to 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 be uh, proud of. When Dan McCarney was hired following the 2010 season, he inherited a program that had not won more than three games in a season since 2004. The term rebuilding was an understatement. From the first time I met Coach Mack, he said in his office, you know, that, that, that something about that guy's special. So seeing him and his, his passion just, just for the game and, and for practice and, and for the little things, you know that's going to carry over to the team. The attention to detail that, that Coach Mack has brought um, with, with grades in the classroom, you know, with um, uh, just everyday life in the community. Um, he, he focuses on making these guys better people, and I think with that comes uh, being a better football player. The really cool thing about this year was the mindset was there from the very beginning. And if you didn't believe it, uh, coming out of the third quarter at Georgia, you knew we had the kind of players to compete with anybody we were going to play the rest of the year. I think they've done a tremendous job going out and getting the right kind of kids, right kind of players, and uh, putting them in the right positions to make plays. They bought in and they care, and they, they don't want to let the guy next to them down. It's bad as Tulane hurt. You knew you had the right kids on that plane coming back, that it wasn't going to carry over. The 24-hour rule was in fact and Dan McCartney was going to turn around on Monday and start getting ready for the next uh, the next ball game. And then we started rolling. The, the way these guys are playing defense is special. Obviously, they're, they're, they're making plays, creating turnovers. What they did inside the 20-yard line, their own red zone, uh, what they would do in pressure at a quarterback, the hits that they would throw out to a receiver, I think that's the thing that really stood out most. It's competitive, so every game there's there's a chance that you're going to win. You know, whereas before you you know there were some games you could pretty much circle on the calendar. Well, we're going to take our take our loss here and move on. And uh, I don't think it's like that anymore. We got to that seventh win, those sixth and seventh wins. It just kind of overwhelming the you know the proud feeling I had for these guys, you know, for this program, and it's uh, it's it's really meant a lot in a lot of different ways to a lot of different people. The third year in the Dan McCartney era has brought the Mean Green back to relevance. With a bowl game on the horizon, a program once clouded by doubt is now looking towards a bright future. North Texas needed this. North Texas needed this season. They really did, from a lot of different angles. There's people on this team who've worked so hard for the last three or four years who have not had a great reward. Going eight and four in college and going to a bowl game, and not just any bowl game, they get to play in the Cotton Bowl, the, the Heart of Dallas Bowl. I think that's huge. A bowl game is a great reward for so many different people, for the players, the people who work here, for students, for fans. The fans needed it. The fans needed this season. You know, once once we start winning, we get the fans. You know, the, the recruits see, 
you know, the environment and, and the winning. And so then it attracts bigger and better recruits and everything just kind of continues to grow in that regard. Just winning, I think, will create, you know, uh, recognition for UNT and help those guys, you know, hopefully want to come play here and keep this thing rolling and, and play for conference championships and be able to go to bowl games and, and uh, just start a new tradition. It was the kind of year where you needed it to tumble hard the right way and a lot of people thought, well, this is a team that might win six, could win seven, and here we are on the verge of nine and you look at some of the close games that, that happened along the way, could even be above that with a few breaks. I think North Texas has a program now. I don't, I don't think this is a flash in the pan. I, don't, I have no idea what their record will be next year, but I think they're a team to contend with. It, it is truly one of the greatest, if not the best seasons in Mean Green football history.